A few days ago, I saw a post on Twitter or X about a Telegram desktop RCE, or remote code execution vulnerability. Now, it included this picture of popping just the calculator application open, and there was a video where you could see, hey, that individual, that actor, clicking on what looked like a video shared in the message to do whatever they wanted to on the endpoint and that Windows computer. Now, I'll admit, I didn't think too much of it because, I don't know, just from that video alone, it wasn't super clear if it was, in fact, a real vulnerability, if it was fake, if it was a hoax, whatever. It could very well have just been some shenanigans, and it looks like a lot of other folks had the same opinion. VX Underground shared that, hey, they saw rumors of this Telegram RCE zero day. They thought, meh, just silly memes. Turns out it was totally a vulnerability, and maybe, oh, there's some severity to it, like joking about being pwned, but it is potentially running code, but in extremely limited and like really specific conditions. They mention though, that some of the details on this proof of concept or how the exploit and remote code execution really worked was shared on that Russian hacker forum, XSS.is. We can track that down really easily with Flair, just honestly searching for Telegram RCE. There is a message here on XSS.is that digs into the details, and we could go grab the link, the URL, the specific ID for that thread if we wanted to go check it out. We can go navigate to that post, but honestly, there's not a lot to it. This isn't all that interesting. Hey, currently there's an exploit within Telegram where you can send a .pyzw file with a mime type of a video MP4, so that way it'll just render and look like a video. On certain systems, i.e. Windows that happens to have Python installed, and that's just odd, it's not natural, it's not by default installed, and if you just do that and also lurk in suspicious and strange Telegram channels, I don't know, you're at your own risk at that point, but there is a GitHub issue and a little bit of some JavaScript code that you could put together your own Telegram bot to be able to play with this and see it in action. They just offer a .pyzw file, which is just a Python archive file, and it could have whatever contents you want that's literally just Python code. They use a simple proof of concept, just pop open the calculator application, and a lot of the conversation here is just, hey, cool, this is neat, they'll go play with it, and and sure, maybe this very well could have done some damage, uh, but it has been fixed. Telegram has now gone and said, hey, okay, we pushed an update that was server-side, something that they could maintain and make changes to. And now they'll add a .untrusted file extension at the end of whatever you have shared with that .pyzw Python zip archive that's really just Python code. That tweet from VX Underground had linked the bleeping computer article that came out a couple days previously discussing exactly this and covering just about everything that we've just said. Hey, couple videos over on X, Telegram, really just thinking, I don't know, that looks like a fake, that looks like a hoax, that looks like potentially a meme. But when the XSS hacking forum had shared, hey, this is how you could do it, pretty simple, with the .pyzw file extension, if Python is configured, installed, set up, and will handle that file extension, it will just go ahead and execute. Kind of an interesting thing here from the dialogue of Telegram, and I appreciate Bleeping Computer maybe out of harping on this a little bit, they say less than 0.01% of their users have Python installed and use that old now unpatched version of Telegram on Windows. Bleeping Computer goes and says, okay, I don't know how you might know exactly that percentage. I'm not sure what you know of the software that's installed on your Windows devices. Uh, is that not really recorded in their privacy policy? Hey, but whatever, maybe that's a nothing burger. The gimmick here though, is that Telegram has a list of file extensions that it knows are usually dangerous. Something that could execute or run code code, and it'll have a little pop-up, little message and filter that says, hey, this could be bad. Are you sure that you want to run this file? Things like a .exe file extension or whatever it could be. And it turns out that in the source code, which is available on GitHub, we can just go look at it. Take a look, Telegram desktop and their T desktop repository. We could go explore everything that might be built up or at least bits and parts of it. Now there was a recent commit that was updating the data document resolver.cpp or C++ file that says the correct Python zip app extension on Windows is pyzw. There was a typo that led to code execution on the client side device without a proper warning because this list of file names, the allow or deny list, in this case deny list to say, look, these are all the extensions where they'll pop up that little message. Are you sure you want to run this potentially dangerous file? 
you might notice that there was just a super slight typo, pi wz as opposed to pi zw, and that is really what opened the door. And it's just a stupid, small, literal Python file with the correct file extension not being correctly handled because of a typo. I like a lot of the comments here that are saying, hey, bro, too late. That did indeed lead to RCE. Now, I thought, hey, we could play with this if we really wanted to. Again, it's kind of small and simple, but look, if we went to uh, Major Geeks, I saw they had an old copy of Telegram, 4.16.6. I ran this in a virtual machine, download it, run a portable version of Telegram, seemed fine. And I'll be honest, I asked ChatGPT, hey, can you just spit together some stupid Python Telegram bot for me? So if I wanted to, I could interact with it, maybe a bot sending that file back to me. They gave me some stupid code and I messaged it a little bit. It had just crapped out the syntax with the Python Telegram bot library, which seemingly works fine for Telegram bots. I'll admit, I'd never done that before. So it was first time interacting with like bot father and setting up and doing some Telegram bot things. Kind of fun, worthwhile project if you're interested. I can show you the code here, but again, this is just what ChatGPT spat out, and I'm willing to press the I believe button and just kind of keep cruising to play with this thing. Ultimately, if it got a file, say we were interacting with the bot just for testing, we sent it something and it wanted to store it as an MP4 file, but bear in mind, really all this took was just sending the file back with that .pyzw file extension that would be opened with the handler in Windows if Python were installed and not preceded by the pop-up warning message. So if we wanted to play with this, we could. We've got an old version of Telegram running, hey, 4.16.6. I've got a bot set up here, and I had the command, oh, simple start, and it'll say, hey, send me a file, and they'll send it back as a video file. But say I were to go to my desktop, and I would create a new file. Let's just make whatever stupid, I don't know, test.pyzw. We'll remove that file extension. Note that it will be adding the Python icon, on here because I do have Python installed on this Windows box. But if I were to open this with Sublime Text, choose another app here, just get to a text editor, I'll open that there. And again, you could use whatever Python code you wanted to, but little simple underscore functions or the double underscores to import OS or subprocess, whatever you might want to use to call or run system commands, will include in whatever square braces little list here, maybe a cmd.exe or calc.exe. Let's do cmd.exe. We'll save that file and then getting back into Telegram, if I go navigate to attach a file and I upload my test.pyzw obviously, not going to be all that interesting, but look, sure, we can upload this, it's going to send back with the .untrusted file extension, so that does mitigate it to a certain extent, obviously the pop-up warning would be ideal, but I don't think that's been fully rolled out from Telegram yet, at least, at the very least, clicking on our test.pyzw, obviously, there's our cmd.exe, there is code execution, we could do whatever we wanted to. Let me do that with calc, just because it's so satisfying to get the Windows calc through Telegram, and a stupid typo. Let me upload it one more time. <laughs> there we go, double click on this fella. There it is. <laughs> So the Bleeping Computer article covers this really well, honestly, I don't think there was much more to showcase, and yeah, sure, there was, for a small brief period of time, a remote code execution vulnerability in Telegram, in Windows, when Python was installed, all thanks to a typo, so kind of weird conditions, but I thought, eh, a little cutesy, might be fun to showcase.